Hey, y'all, and good now, whenever and wherever this finds you. Welcome to today's episode of Pontification by T.C. Today I have a special opportunity. My latest joy was to make snippets out of an interview that a radio station did with Jimmy Dore. And they had a Zoom of all four of them together. And so for me, it was to take snippets. And uh, I had a really great time. And so I want to share some of those with you now. This snippet's about Andrew Yang. I got to say something about that real quick. There, there's just so much. I want to give you a little bit of hope. What you just said about um, how to piss off a feminist, my take on that, which surprises people, is that um, why why would you be pissed off? Because nobody can offend you without your consent. I'm, I'm not a feminist because I don't agree with the handed out kind of delivery of the way feminists are supposed to operate. Like they're supposed to be angry and they're supposed to be against. Why do you have to be angry if you are secure with your femininity or who you are? So maybe I'm the only one that thinks that way, but that's, everybody expects me to be, that's that's another conversation to you. Yeah, and- and I wanted wanted to cheer you on about that. Right, and also Jimmy, like I find it like so hypocritical that sometimes that we see these people complaining about like, Andrew Yang wanted to run on a universal basic income. And everybody says that free money makes people lazy. So then how lazy are all the bankers and the corporations who got bailouts from our government? How lazy are those people who like destroy the economy? AIG gave themselves bonuses, but to help a single mom who's struggling, that'll make them lazy. I think the real lazy people are the congressmen, the corporations, the military industrial complex, like, like they, why not look inward? So what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think you stumbled over, you know, the problem with Andrew Yang and, uh, and while he's an affable guy and, uh, you know, he seems pleasant, he's, he serves (laughs) the same, he seems, he serves the same masters and that's not you. It's not working class people. It's not uh, even managerial people. He serves the billionaire class and uh, don't forget it. And uh, he he wants to take money from the same people the Democrats do and the same people the Republicans do, and they're he's going to serve the same exact agenda. So that's the problem with Andrew Yang. He doesn't. I thought it was very helpful that he brought to light the uh um the what's what is it like the basic income right universal yeah basic UBI income. yeah yeah, yeah. UBI. I thought that was uh, that was really great it really. I was for the first time we were talking about ideas again in a presidential mm-hmm. campaign. So I, I I really applaud him for doing that and everything. But I think, you know, for him, uh, that equates to uh, we got to get rid of truck drivers and everybody's got to uh, we got to go to driverless trucks. I remember uh, Tucker Carlson, of all people, uh, was being interviewed by, I think, Ben Shapiro. And Ben Shapiro was at, you know, and Tucker Carlson was making the case that, uh, you know, he said, I'm a capitalist, but uh, it's not a religion. Uh, you know, if <laughs> you can't, if you can't tell a high school graduate that who wants to work 40 hours a week, that you can't, if you can't provide him with a house and a way to raise a family, then your system's failing that guy. And, uh, and so Ben Shapiro said, what about, you know, dr- when we get rid of driverless uh, get, get rid of truck drivers. What about? He goes, yeah, I would pass a law to stop that. And he goes, I thought you were a capitalist. He goes, I am a capitalist. It's not a religion. <laughs> some of it works, some of it doesn't. You know. Right. And I would definitely. I'm like, and you, you're not hearing that from Chris Hayes or, or you're hearing that from Tucker Carlson, right? And he's going back against the, the as the people like to say, he's he's has a heterodox opinion, and but uh, I. It, He's free to say things like that. People are like, why is Tucker Carlson? I was my question was why is Tucker Carlson having me on to talk about the war in Ukraine? Why am I allowed to tell the truth about Syria? Yeah. On Tucker Carlson. That. And so when I finally I would only I never really had a conversation with him. I would only do the segment and then as soon as I'm done, I'm done. And we don't talk or anything. We don't go out for a beer. 
but he did invite me to do an hour long interview last summer, maybe, or in 21, maybe. And um, I asked him this, that very question. I said, Hey, I want to know how come you're allowed to do all this. And he said, um, they took away my advertisers already. And I said, what do you mean? You don't have advertisers? No way. <laughs> well, if you look, if it was, it's, you know, it's, he, he said he's got some wasn't for Mike the pillow guy and catheter commercials. And if you look, that's basically it. He doesn't have any he doesn't have any mainstream advertisers. And I'm like, well, then how do you make money? And so the show's so popular, they have to pay. So like Spectrum and AT&T and whoever carries your excuse me, your cable to you, they have to pay Fox News to deliver that show to their customers. No. So and by the so the, his show is so highly rated that's how they figure out the compensation how much they have to pay for it and so they have to cable pr providers have to pay so much money to Fox News because of the high numbers of Cocker Carlson's show that they don't really miss the money from that advertising so he's a very profitable show for Fox News even even without mainstream news advertisers which frees him up to tell the truth about COVID the vaccines Syria. Ukraine. Yeah. It's amazing. He's outdoing all of them on all of those things. You're not going to find that's the that's the true irony. And people call him uh, a white supremacist and all that stuff. And uh, because of his immigration policy, which mimics Bill Clinton's and Bernie Sanders immigration policy up until 2016. And uh, so uh, I, I, I'm not here trying to make anybody like or dislike uh, a, a corporate news host on a corporate news cable show. What I'm saying is that uh, it's outrageous that the person who's the most maligned in liberal society anyway has the number one news show, which, by the way, more Democrats watch that show than actually watch uh, Rachel Maddow. Uh, that's kind of uh, people don't tell you that's that. That's the either. whole point. That's the <laughs> whole point. You're 100 you're, you're percent right. I just love Jimmy Dore and the way he talks with such passion and righteous indignation. And I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you down the road.